questions and get a mic to you. Everybody, um, just with it being Veterans Day, want to uh, make sure that uh, I acknowledge just the, the men and women that have served our country and, and currently do, and uh, say thank you for for all that you do, the sacrifices that you make, and, and the opportunities that you provide and have provided um, to myself and, and uh, all of those that uh, enjoy what we have here inside of this country. So thank you very much. Um, yesterday, the uh, announcement of of, uh, of our facility, uh, new facility, the expansion, just. The support that, that uh, is here at Tennessee is so unique, and I've said that from the moment that I've gotten here. It's, it's a huge part of why I wanted to be here, but it's even better than, than I anticipated uh, once I've been inside of the program. And we talk a lot about the student-athlete experience, and, and certainly this is going to have a huge impact on, on that. We want to provide the, the best student-athlete experience in, in America. I think the culture that we've built inside the building is leading to that for sure. And uh, now you have uh, all the bells and whistles and resources that uh, provide unique opportunities for your student athletes to to become their best but to enjoy their teammates at the same time and, and uh, very appreciative of, of those that have helped provide the, that opportunity can't wait for it, it to be finished here in the new near uh, near future um, obviously this week uh, Georgia really good football team uh, in all three phases of the game <coughs> excuse me uh, really good personnel across the board they're playing at an extremely high level a uh, huge test for our football team uh, have had a great week of preparation excited to uh, to get to game day and, and go compete with our guys looking forward to that opportunity questions start in the back with David get a mic to you Hey, Coach, as you get ready for this tough Georgia defense, what are some of the things that they do really well that make them so hard to score against? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure there's anything that they don't do really well. Um, you know, uh, schematically, um, you know, they understand what they're doing defensively. They don't bust. They have their eyes in the right, right spot. They tackle extremely well out in space. Um, you know, they got good cover guys. Um, they're big, long, physical up front. <clears throat> I think I think they're really unique in in that you know they got 22 plus guys that are going to play on, on that side of the ball. They're they're extremely deep. Um, it's a huge test for us, and and uh, um, you know for us I think you know <clears throat> big football game uh, you can get caught up in in the emotion of the game. I think we got to play with a ton of passion, not get caught up in the in the emotion of it. Uh, we got to do the ordinary things at a really high level, and and if if we do that, then uh, we'll be ready to go compete at, at a high level too. Advance. Josh, how would you assess how Hendon has done pre-snap recognizing blitzes and making sure the O-line protections are shifted in, in the right way and, and whatnot? Yeah, for the most part, he's done a really good job of understanding uh, the protections. Um, sometimes he's got the freedom to adjust it. Sometimes, you know, he doesn't. And, and uh, so then you got to understand your hots. Uh, I think as we've gone through the season, he's continued to progress with that. Uh, Pre-snap recognition, safety alignments, backer alignments, the tells on that and, and, uh, and trying to play uh, efficiently. Josh, obviously, as you know, Brock Bowers, really successful at Georgia. They have a couple other big tight ends as well. One, what do you think of their group of tight ends? And two, how do you think you guys have defended the tight end position this year? I, I think we've defended it well uh, at times. Uh, they're a huge part of, of what they do offensively, playing 12 personnel uh, a lot. Uh, and they do that because those that group uh, – plays and competes at a really high level. Um, they do a really good job in the run game. They do a good job in the play action pass from inside the core, but they're able to split those guys out and use them as wide receivers and, and try to find mismatches um, you know, where they can use their length to their advantage. We have to be dialed into our keys all day long. That, that's you know your second level linebackers and then your safeties in particular too. Wes and Mike. <clears throat> Josh, where's the line between sort of playing with passion and playing with emotion? I mean, I guess that may be different for each guy a little bit, but where do you, how do you define where that line is? Uh, I, I just I think um, when you're playing out of emotion, sometimes there's extra things that happen from from snap to whistle, and, and uh, um, for for us, you know, being on the right side of it, being able to reset to the next play, not letting one play affect the, the next. That's really what I'm getting at when I say that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, Coach, early on we saw uh, Clemson and South Carolina get deep into the Georgia secondary with some deep plays. I think South Carolina had four plays over 35 yards. Why haven't we seen more teams have the sort of success that other teams were having earlier this year against Georgia? 
because they got really good personnel on the back end and in the front four. Uh, and, you know, their backers, if they decide to bring pressure, have a tendency to get home. You know, a combination of those two things make it difficult. Thanks. Obviously, George has been going with Stetson Bennett as of late, but Daniel is certainly very capable as well. Do you do prep for both, or how do you kind of handle that potential situation? Yeah, both those guys, you know, play fairly similarly uh, when, when they're in the football game. I, I don't think their offense changes a whole lot, you know, based on who's in there. So you, you prepare for, for what you're seeing, the personnel groupings. You understand, you know, what you're seeing from the quarterback position. you got to do a great job of, of bottling them up. You know, you got to get pressure on them. Uh, at the same time, you can't let them escape the pocket. Coach, obviously Georgia's defense gets a lot of attention, but, I mean, they're scoring 38 points a game. What, what do you see in their offense that makes them be able to put up so many points? They got a good offensive line, got good skill players, quarterback that's playing super efficient. They're a good football team across the board. You know, offense, defense, special teams. Um, you know, that's why they've played the way that they have in all three phases. Josh, a couple things. One, did, did you, you know, going, it looks like watching this season, the receivers, your receivers, have been behind secondaries kind of all season long. As you got through camp, as you got to know this team, did, did you expect they were going to be able to do that? Because you just don't always see that much separation. Like those guys are getting. I, I thought our guys continued to grow uh, as players, and you know each game unfolds differently, and, and your matchups are different. Um, you know those guys have done a good job when when asked to to, to beat the guys that, that they've gone across and have found a way to, to get behind people at times during the course of the year. Um, you know this is our best, biggest test. You know at this point, just the, the way this defense is playing. Also, we'll give it a shot. Tie on uh, Jabari Warren. Any update there? You're just gonna give it a shot. Yeah. See, see what happens. Okay. Uh, you know, I mean, we always make those decisions based off of Friday's practice. So we'll see where we're at. Good try, though. <laughs> okay. In the back, then Eric and Austin. Well, coach, a quick follow-up on that. Um, have they been able to get some work in practice throughout the week? We have been able to get work with uh, with those guys. You know, we'll, we'll see where they're at uh, come tomorrow, and and uh, hope to have those guys ready for Saturday. And a quick follow-up, you always stress the importance of the 48 hours beforehand. How is the team's focus heading into Georgia on Saturday? I think the really focus today was good. Uh, it's a, you know, a Thursday uh, walkthrough type day for us. Um, the energy out there was good. Um, but uh, I thought they were extremely focused. And, and uh, you know, tomorrow will be a big day for us, too. And, and uh, just finishing it the right way. I, <clears throat> that was really important, and I mentioned it a lot early in the year because I didn't think we did a very good job of it. We've gotten better as the season's going on. Eric, what makes Jordan Davis so effective up front from your vantage point? And, and their secondary, they don't replace a lot of guys. How have that unit gotten better as the season's progressed? Uh, they, they, they just have gotten better um, cohesively. You know, as the year goes on, you continue to grow in understanding of your schemes, your alignment, your technique, and, and you know, it's created turnovers. Um, they've flipped the way the game has been played. You know, when you look at the Florida game, it's a, a 3 nothing ball game with, I don't know, 2.30 left in the in the game, something like that. And, you know, it's a 21-point outburst real quick by them. you got to do a great job of, of, you know, managing the football game. Um, you, you can't not be aggressive, but your kids got to understand they, they got to be smart too. Questions. <clears throat> uh, Coach Kirby uh, referenced your time at Missouri and, and said you've added some wrinkles since then. Uh, could, could you elaborate on if there are some, some changes philosophically and then also how many similarities do you see between what Kirby and George is doing now versus 2016-2017? Yeah, some similarities, you know, dating back to, you know, 2014 or 2014 Sugar Bowl, there's similarities to, to what they do schematically to, you know, them growing and changing and you're, you're different because of your personnel. And, and for us, you know, we've been different every year, let alone every different stop that we're at because your personnel changes from, you know, who your tight ends are to, to your offensive line to, to what your quarterback feels comfortable with. You continue to evolve in this game. Anything else, Coach? All right. Guys, thank you. Have a great afternoon. Thanks, John.